Hello, beautiful souls. My name is Jessie and welcome to my Tiny Talks podcast, the show where we'll dive into self-love, inner child healing, and discovering your soul's purpose. I look forward to chatting with you every single week and helping you grow exponentially in all areas of your life. Without further ado, here's today's Tiny Talk. Hello, you guys, and welcome to my fourth episode of Tiny Talks. Today is going to be all about self-love and learning to pour into you something that I know can be uncomfortable, maybe a foreign subject, and I just want to be able to give you that little bit of permission that you deserve self-love in all aspects of your life. And so this is going to be a huge theme on my podcast is talking about self-love, what that means, my journey with it, why we all deserve and need to have self-love in order to be successful in all areas of our life. And so really to begin this podcast, the reason that I got this idea and I wanted to chat about this is for as long as I can remember, I've had very toxic thoughts go on in my head of, you're not good enough, you'll never be successful, you're not smart enough, comparing myself to others, whether it was in school, comparing to my classmates, comparing to my older brother, strangers, whatever it is from academics to clothing to looks, whatever it is, all aspects that you can think of that we're all so guilty of comparing ourselves to and realizing that that really wasn't getting me anywhere and indeed it was holding me back from finding my true potential, from finding the things that I'm really good at and I excel in. So today I'm gonna leave you with five key ways to start to pour into yourself, to give you that permission to love yourself, to have self-love each and every day. And so, I can remember beginning my self-love journey and it was around three years ago when I had asked one of my near and dear friends, you know, how do you seem like you love yourself so much? You know, she always carried this facade around of just positivity, spreading positivity with everybody, loving herself, always speaking kindly. And one day I literally asked her, you know, how is it that you learned to love yourself so much? And she said, I look at myself every morning in the mirror and I tell myself good things. And I thought, simple enough, okay, I can try to do that. And I tried that the next morning and let me tell you, I felt so uncomfortable. I kind of felt like I was lying to myself. I definitely had imposter syndrome. I just felt really, really weird and kind of fluffed it to the side because I was like, there's no way, like this is a joke. And so I was curious about that moving on and on. And then I realized that that was likely stemming from my ego speaking up and telling me the things that I had been telling myself for so long, trying to shut down those positive voices, right? So if we think of our ego and what it does, it really tries to keep us small and bring out those negative aspects of us that we sometimes don't want to hold on to anymore. And so what was helpful for me in beginning my journey was actually listening to a positive affirmation video every single day. I remember it to a T, it was a 20 minute video that I would listen to every day, just in the hopes that I would think at least one kind thought about myself. And so for me, this was super helpful because it wasn't coming from my own voice to begin with, which was super overwhelming, but instead coming from a stranger that I was hearing on the internet. And so I remember doing that for about two months of just listening to these positive affirmations over and over and over again. And then I started to do a few exercises of just writing down, I am beautiful, I am worthy, I am capable, I am kind, I radiate positivity, whatever it is that I was feeling pulled to share. And the thing about this, you guys, is it can be so private. Nobody has to know that you're doing this. Nobody has to know what you're writing. This is a journey with you and yourself, right? Self-love. And then from there, I was able to look myself in the mirror and say these things. And it wasn't that it was so uncomfortable anymore. I almost found it humorous in that I would say, you are so beautiful. And then I would almost start giggling to myself because I knew it was still uncomfortable, but I really wanted to believe it. And the more that I just kept quieting down those voices in the back of my mind that were screaming, this is so stupid, like, no, you're not beautiful. Like, look at that thing on your face. Like, look at your freckles, right? All these things that we tell ourselves, gosh, we are so stinking mean to ourselves, right? And so that kind of began my journey with that. 
And now over time, this has been, like I said, around three years of constantly and consistently catching myself when I'm telling myself those negative things, right? That's huge. When we can start to identify the areas of our life when we're comparing ourselves to others, belittling ourselves, talking down to ourselves and talking down to ourselves to others, when we can start to catch ourselves doing that, that is when change can happen. Right, so I want you to bring awareness to yourself right now of when was the last time you genuinely told yourself something nice about you and meant it. Right, it's okay if you can't remember because oftentimes we don't take the time to do those things and that's exactly why I am here is to instill that in you, instill that belief and bring out that love that you deserve to pour into you. Right, and so even right now, if you were to tell yourself just one thing you like about yourself. Let's start from there. And we can take it outwards of our body, meaning maybe you're really good at something. Maybe it's not even a characteristic about yourself. Let's start with that, right? Maybe you're a really good cook. Maybe you're a really good basketball player, right? Maybe you're a really good photographer. Whatever it is, start to identify those areas of your life that you're really, really good at. That's pouring into us and thanking ourselves for showing up and doing those things, right? And so I really wanna dive into five ways that we can just start to pour into ourselves. And I know I had just mentioned a few ways, which is listening to positive affirmations, journaling about positive affirmations, telling yourself one good thing every single day that you're proud of yourself for. And the first thing that I have on this list that I wanna share with you guys is to stop comparing yourselves to other people. And this is probably the hardest one. And the reason that it's the hardest one is because it's very natural for us as human beings to do this, right? We adapt, we wanna fit in, right? We wanna match other people, mirror other people. We don't wanna be the outcast or we don't wanna be different. But I'm just curious about that of what is so wrong with being different, especially if being different is what makes you happy, right? So that was a huge thing that I had to stop doing for myself was to stop comparing my journey and my path to somebody else, especially when we don't know the whole truth behind someone. We don't know what they're going through. We don't know what they've gone through. We don't know their experiences, right? And it's oftentimes that we compare ourselves at our lowest to somebody else's highest, Right? We compare our, us beginning our journey to somebody 10 years with experience into that journey. And then we almost give up because we think we're not as good as them or we'll never be as good as them. But the truth of the matter is, is if we've already identified that for ourselves, it's very hard to keep going. Right? If we've already given up and told ourselves we failed before we've even tried, it's very hard to get that momentum right? to keep going. Okay, so that's the first thing is to try to stop comparing yourself to others and noticing when you're doing that. And the beautiful thing about this, you guys, is that applies to all of us because there's only one us. And think of all the people that are probably comparing themselves to you and you don't even know it. Right? And it's okay to have mentors and role models and people that we look up to that guide us and pull us, of course. But if that looking up to someone or comparing to someone is deteriorating how you view yourself, that's when problems start to arise, okay? So I want you to start there by catching yourself every time you notice comparing yourself to someone by bringing yourself down. The second one, and this one is also equally as tricky and hard to stem away from, is to stop worrying about other people's opinions. You guys, this is so hard on our mental health and on our self-esteem is when we care about the opinions of others more than about ourselves. And I am so guilty of this. I think most of us can admit to ourselves, even in our mind, that it is so easy to accept the opinions of others and then stop doing the things that make us happy. Right? So at the end of the day, the thing to remember is You can't make everybody happy. You'll never please everybody. That's just the reality. We're all so different and that's beautiful, right? We don't have to make everybody happy. You don't have to please everybody. 
And I know that sometimes we might think that we have to please our family, we have to please our friends. It's almost like we put ourselves on this pedestal of where we need to be. Even if again, that means not doing the things that truly bring us joy and happiness. So I just encourage you to notice those things. And sometimes that can come down to having hard conversations, releasing, recognizing the areas of your life that you are slowing down to match other people. And one thing that I'm just going to express that I tell myself all the time is if all those people went away, what would I be left with? Would I be mad at myself for not doing the things that I want to do because of the opinion of a couple people? Right? When all that goes away and we're 80, 90 years old reflecting back on our life, you're going to be so much more thankful for the things that you decided to do that brought you joy versus the things that you felt like you had to do in order to please a few people. Okay, the third one, and this is huge. It's allowing yourself to make mistakes. And I know this is probably one of the most uncomfortable ones because mistakes often make us feel like we did something wrong. They make us feel like we're less than, like we shouldn't keep going because we made a mistake. Right, what are people gonna think of me because I messed this thing up? But you guys, Growth happens in mistakes. We grow from our mistakes. Always reminding yourself that if you knew what you did after the mistake beforehand, you wouldn't have made it in the first place and therefore it's a learning opportunity, right? But if we just get so stuck in that we made a mistake, what are people gonna think of me? Oh my goodness, da da da. It really gets hard for us to keep going. But if we can just identify for ourselves, you know, what did this mistake teach me? What did I get out of this that I then don't want to duplicate or I don't want to do again? It's okay to make mistakes. It's actually inhumane of us to not make mistakes. That is how we grow, how we flourish, how we learn, and how we evolve. So if you have made a mistake that you are stuck on or you're having a hard time getting past, I just encourage you to sit with that for a moment and ask, what did this teach me though? What can I take away from this? Maybe it's teaching that to someone else so they don't make the same mistake that you did, right? There's always a flip side to every negative as well as there's always a flip side to every positive. Always, always, always. Okay, the next one, which holy smokes rings near and dear to my heart, which is value does not come from looks. We think of self-love, we often think of, I'm beautiful, I am this, I am that, which is so true, you guys. But self-love also comes from the things that are not a reflection of us, and the things that are in our core and in our soul and who we are, right? If we are always fixated on a way that we look or want to look to fit in, We are already stepping away from what fills our cup and what gives us true self-love. And even from an outside perspective, let's just look at physically what we wear. Are you wearing things and putting on a facade of what you think will help you fit in? Or are you wearing clothing and using things and expressing yourself in a way that is you and is genuine and is unique? What is so wrong with standing out? What is so wrong with being different? No two of us are the same, yet we all try to fit into this box. And you guys, I for so long tried to fit into that box, but the thing is, some of us are circles, some of us are triangles, some of us are squares, right? We're not all going to fit into that same shape. And if we continuously try to, we are going to go our whole lives thinking that there's something wrong with us or we're not the same as everybody else. When in reality, we don't have to be. Find those things about you that are unique, that are different, and flourish that. Accept that. Honor that. That is so cool to be different. Right? So learning that value does not come from looks. And the last thing that I have on here, which has been a huge learning curve for me, especially in the last year, is giving yourself permission to release toxic people. And I can't express enough how much having toxic people in your life deteriorates you from having your highest level of self-love. 
And the reason for that is because when we have those toxic people in our lives, especially if we know in the back of our mind that they're toxic, every single time we engage with them, we hang out with them, we surround ourselves with them, we know how that makes us feel or we wouldn't have identified them as toxic people in the first place, we are lowering our self-worth. We are lowering our self-love. We are stooping down to that level. And I know that it can be hard to release people. I know that letting go of friendships and family members or whatever it is can be hard. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's easy to do those things. But I will with 100% sit here and tell you that it is worth it. Because I have done it and I thank myself every single day for being able to just not care anymore. If you are not serving my life, if you are not lifting me up, making me feel good, making me happy, what is the point? Life is too stinking short to surround ourselves with people who make us feel like garbage. Life is too short to surround ourselves with people that make us feel small and make us step away from our truest potentials. Right? So giving yourself that permission that it's okay to release toxic people. And of course, there's a proper way to do this. There's a professional and kind way to do this. And it's not easy and those conversations are not fun. But I'm telling you with every ounce of my heart that you're going to thank yourself more for releasing that and finding those people that are serving your life and lift you up and fulfill you then you are to continuously surround yourself with the people that make you feel again like garbage, right? So those are the five things that I wanted to leave you with today. And just to close, I just want you to take a moment right now. And again, maybe placing your hand over your heart to just know that you're alive right now, honoring every ounce of your body from head to toe, you know, thanking yourself, thanking your body for everything and all that it does for you. What is one way that you can pour into yourself today? Right? We often hear self-care and we think of taking a bath or having a glass of wine, right? We often hear the same things. But self-care can be absolutely anything that makes you feel good. So I encourage you to do that today, to even take five minutes. We all have an extra five minutes in our day to slow down, to thank ourselves, to honor ourselves, to pour into ourselves. Okay, you are so worthy of self-love and self-kindness and self-respect and to, to be surrounded by those people who also deliver that to you. I want to thank you guys so much, as always, for tuning into my podcast. I want to thank you for being open and willing to just learn to love yourself a little bit more each and every day. I truly hope that you found this helpful, maybe inspiring, Feel free to share this with anyone that you think may need just an extra dose of love in their life. I thank you guys so, so much, and I hope you have a wonderful, fabulous day. Until next time.